Hi everybody, welcome back uh, to part 6 and the final part of the Tamiya 148 scale F35 Lightning build. Uh, in this video I'm going to finish the model off by building the weapons, uh, fitting them to the model and also doing the uh, cockpit canopy and the boarding ladder just to finish the model off. So there's been a lot of work again uh, with the weapons this week in terms of masking and painting and decals on them. So I'll make a start this week uh, over at the bench and I'll show you how we got the uh, final bits and pieces together. Okay, so uh, a couple of jobs to do to just finish this model off this week. Uh, the first job is the canopy, or the canopies in the case of this kit, because we get two complete assemblies. One is for the closed canopy, which is this one. So that uh, frame just goes inside and just fits directly onto the top of the cockpit. The second one uh, for the open canopy has these uh, retraction struts and this really positive location tab that goes into the front of the cockpit combing. And we've also got the locking mechanisms, these latches around the bottom surface of the canopy. So this is just a four part assembly. This one, I've just done that off camera. The Canopies themselves just have one location point along the bottom frame here. And I've just applied some tape to that to get the uh, sprue gate sanded off nice and smooth. So these are all ready to go. I'll get these painted up uh, and we'll come back and do those in a while. The other thing that we've got to do uh, to finish the model off is the weapons loadout. Now I've built these uh, in a previous episode earlier on in the build. So we have a pair of AIM 120s for the uh, internal weapons bay, along with a pair of JDAMs, which are these two. We have uh, four GBU 12s for the pylons under the wings, uh, and a pair of sidewinders, which I haven't uh, built up yet. We'll do that on camera. We've also got all the pylons already uh, prepared. For the underwings so uh, so we'll get those painted up later on in the build but i want to do the canopy first so the first thing to do is to mask the canopies off i'm just using some of tamia's uh, finishing compound just to polish this canopy up i've got a little scratch on it so uh, we'll just clean that up a little bit it's come out These are lovely uh, transparencies that Tamir have provided here. There's no uh, mould seam in them. And it's crystal clear and as you can see they're tinted as well. This is a Tamir anti-static brush. And they're really good, uh, especially when you've polished a canopy. The uh, tend to attract dust once you've polished them. It must introduce some static into the plastic. Uh, and this removes that, so uh, it brings the canopies up nice and clean. And I also use these for cleaning the models, getting little bits of dust off uh, just before I display them. Tamiya provide these masking stickers and you can see that there's two sets uh, but actually the shape of the canopy frame is simple enough to just mask off with some straight pieces of masking tape so I'm going to do it like that I've tried this first uh, sticker and it's more fiddly to get a shaped piece like that to fit properly than it does to build it up yourself from different strips of tape so that's the way I'm going to do it so I'm just going to use some two millimeter strips. I believe that Edward uh, about to release a masking set 
for this kit, including the uh, RAM panels. And I think this is one example where investing in that would be worthwhile because there's so much masking to do on the model. It just takes an enormous amount of time. If I was building this kit again and I was doing it with the uh, different coloured RAM panels, I'd definitely wait for the Edward set before embarking on it again. Not that I'm going to build another one. 1F35 is enough. All right, so that's the first one done. I'll uh, do the other one off camera, uh, take them over and get them painted. I'll be starting off with some black to uh, base coat them uh, and also make sure that uh, we see black from the inside. And then we'll be painting the frame in the fuselage color. Okay, so uh, I've pre-coated or undercoated the canopies in black. This one has yet to be top coated. Uh, this one's had the uh, top coat mix uh, given out in the Tamir instructions for the fuselage colour. So I'll just do this one as well. Uh, gloss coat them both with some X22 and then we can uh, apply the decals to the outside of the frames and also do the uh, insides as well. Okay, so uh, we'll get these weapons and pylons painted up now. And Tamiya, for the majority of the colours, call out Light Ghost Grey, which is FS36375. And I've just compared that with Tamiya's own Light Ghost Grey, which is LP37. And the Tamiya colour is a lot more blue than FS36375. So I think that might look a bit odd on the model. So I'm going to stick with the Mr. Hobby Light Ghost Grey. Uh, and then we've got some masking off to do. The J-Dams and the Paveways have got some olive drab on them as well. So uh, we've got a bit of detail painting to do on these before we can put the decals on. Okay, that's been another marathon session of masking. So uh, let's see how we've done with these paveways. I've taken two off and they're all right. Seems that everything on this model uh, has required uh, lots of masking and I'll be glad to have it done. The uh, J-Dams uh, took an awful long time to mask up. It's a very complicated shape around the frame in the centre there.
Okay, so uh, all these parts now need a coat of gloss varnish ready for the decals which we'll do next. Okay, it's uh, time to get some decals on these uh, weapons. Uh, I'll do one of each on camera. I'll start with the AIM-120 missiles. I think these have probably got the most uh, different decals to fit. I'm going to use Mark Fit Strong to settle these down. Something that I'm not keen on with these Tamiya decals is uh, that they take quite a long time, or at least I've found they take quite a long time to grab onto the piece. So uh, what I've learned from using them is, first of all, not to leave them in the water for too long, because that runs the risk of uh, removing the adhesive. Uh, and the second is to get the air out from underneath the film as quickly as you can and actually get the adhesive on the decal in contact with the piece as quickly as you can. On to the JDAMs next, and we don't have much to do with these, just uh, four or five decals to finish these off. The Tamiya instructions uh, call out to pick out these uh, straps or bands in silver and they're very fine and would be difficult to brush paint but I'll be using uh, some silver decal stripes in silver. These are extra decals from Hanant's in the UK and they go down to something like a 0 0.2 millimetre, something like that, up to this very wide one. Uh, so there's one in there that I can use, so uh, that will be just easier than trying to pick the stripes out with a brush. Finally we'll do one of the paved ways.
Okay, so that's uh, one of each of the weapons done. I'll spend some time now and finish the others. Then uh, come back, we'll do a little bit of uh, painting that's called out in the instructions. I'll give these a bit of a panel line wash as well. There's a lot of engraved detail in them. Then we can look to uh, finish them off with a coat of varnish. With the uh, decals dried, and that was a day's work to put all the decals on these uh, missiles and bombs. Just going to give some of them a panel line wash. So the AIM 120s have got quite a lot of engraved detail on them, which I'll pick out. So I like to uh, let the wash dry before I remove it and that's just so that it stays in the panel lines, you don't drag it out when it's wet. Okay, all done, and uh, that's been a lot of work to get those uh, weapons built, painted, decals on. Probably a day and a half, something like that. Uh, so now I just want to get them uh, finished off by giving them a coat of satin varnish, then we can fit them to the model.
So there's no glue needed on these pylons. The sway braces are a push fit into both the weapon and the pylon. Each of these pylons for the paveways is unique uh, and Tamiya provide a key in the form of uh, the distancing of the holes on the location points. So it's only possible to put the correct pylon in the correct place. Okay, so the last thing to do now is to uh, sort out the boarding ladder. This is just uh, temporarily in position. Uh, the canopy, and we've just got the pitot tubes uh, to do, and then she'll be all done.
Okay, so uh, those decals are quite tricky, but actually once they're in, uh, they look quite good. The uh, carrier film's disappeared. The hard bit is to get them lined up with the engravings in the plastic canopy, but uh, it does take some time to do that. And for that reason, I'm just going to do the one canopy for this build. I'm not going to uh, spend any more time on it doing the second canopy that Tommy has supplied. But they do give you a full set of decals uh, to do both if you want to. So these are the parts for the boarding ladder and the ladder door here. And I'm going to show you the uh, build with the ladder deployed, just so that you can see what it looks like really. Uh, but in the end I'll display the model with the door closed uh, and the access ladder retracted with a closed canopy. I just think the model looks better to display like that but uh, for the purposes of showing you what it looks like I'll do it uh, in the deployed position and I'll show you what that looks like with the open canopy as well. These are the uh, pizza tubes. As I said, I'm not going to glue the boarding ladder because for displaying the model I'm going to have the door shut with the canopy closed as well. But it's a nice positive fit. You can actually uh, fit it and remove it as you want to. And the uh, last job is to just polish the canopy up, get rid of the uh, glue from the decals that are fitted inside there and then we'll get that fitted. I'll show you what it looks like in both the open and closed positions. So this is the open canopy rail which I showed you earlier on. Okay so that's all done, just a quick dust off with the anti-static brush and uh, we'll get some photographs done ready for the end of the video okay so that's it we're all done uh, for another one I think altogether that's taken round about five or six weeks I think I started 
uh, around about the end of January, beginning of February. So uh, not too bad for me. It's quite a quick build for me, and particularly for uh, a model as complicated as this, uh, and in the configuration that I chose to build it with uh, the coloured RAM panels, uh, rather than one of the later versions which had a planar uh, airframe. That uh, obviously took a lot of masking and painting work to do. Uh, and then I also opted for the uh, beast mode with the full complement of weapons uh, loaded onto the aircraft. And again this week that's taken a good two or three days just to do the weapons on this one. So you could simplify the build a little bit by not going down those two avenues that I did. On the positive side, the fit of the model is absolutely incredible. Uh, some of the engineering that Tamir have come up with uh, to simplify the build uh, is really interesting and the kit went together without any difficulty at all. So after all that work, I'll be opting for something a little bit simpler in terms of the next aeroplane build. Uh, I'm still waiting on the next 132 scale project. So I'll be tackling another 148 scale subject uh, for the ACES series. That'll be coming up uh, fairly soon. I'm also going to get back to the Bismarck in the interim period. Uh, it's been well over a month, probably about six weeks since I last updated. Uh, so I'm going to do some work on that next week. But the other thing I've got to do over the next uh, few days uh, is to reorganise the uh, workshop really. It's got into a bit of a mess. I need a good tidy up and I'm also going to be fitting some new uh, bench tops uh, hopefully to create a little bit more space uh, and to tidy the place up a little bit. So uh, I'll see you next week hopefully for another Bismarck episode get that back on the bench again. Until then everybody look after yourselves stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.